Sam Hoskins has enjoyed many good days on the race course as a syndicate manager for Kennet Valley Thoroughbreds and Hot to Trot Racing. 2020 will look a little different for Sam and his syndicate members, with the racing season delayed due to COVID-19 and racing in Britain due to start back up again on June 1st behind closed doors. Sam has joined us to talk about what lockdown has been like and what the immediate future looks like for syndicates. Thanks for joining us, Sam. Hi, Kelsey. I'm great to, great to talk to you. <laughs> great, great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on. Um, so you want to start out by telling us what the last couple of months have been like for your businesses? It's been very surreal, really. Um, it's, I mean, it all came, everything sort of came to a halt just after the Cheltenham Jumping Festival here um, in mid-March. And uh, um, it was really just about the time when traditionally our syndicates would really sort of spring into life, not, not so much in the race course, but um, we would do a lot of um, uh, hosting stable visits to see, see our horses at the trainers. Um, we do a lot of different other social events. We put on quite a few uh, sort of pre-season lunches. Um, we had visits to um, up to the Grand National Meeting Aintree to do a sort of a walk of the course up there. We would uh, do a, um, a trip to Punchstown races uh, for our members and various things. And, and, and everything has just been postponed. And um, it, it's, it's very strange because it, it, we one of the most sociable time of the year for everyone. And, and actually the reason people buy into a share of a horse aside from the, the race course action is for the social part of it. And, and we are an extremely social group in, in both of the syndicates. Um, Hot to Trot especially is, is very events orientated and, and it has gone from uh, so much plan to nothing. And um, it's, it's bizarre really. Mm -hmm. And when you have a situation like that, like you said, where you're not going racing, where the social aspects are removed, are there any syndicate members, um, you know, saying they can't justify doing this anymore? What's that been like? Well, I think we've been extremely lucky. We have had a couple of syndicate members in the Kennet Valley syndicates where, where it's a little bit more expensive in terms of um, entrance and sort of um, and sort of charities because they own a 16th share of the horse, whereas Hot to Trot, it's more of a club type environment and there's 80 of them. Um, so a couple of people... Um, in the Kennet Valley syndicates um, were um, struggling a little bit with the, the spring top ups, which we have um, sort of start of April. Um, and we've, uh, but we've looked, tried to look after them as best we can and sort of ha help them sort of uh, pay in time. But in general, apart from those sort of couple of cases, we've been extremely lucky. And um, in general, uh, the way we, we do it, we don't sort of have monthly direct debits and things, which I know some syndicates do have. Um, and we have toyed with that. And, but I think for the moment, we're, we're lucky that generally they've paid up front. And, and, and I, I suspect probably quite a few of our people play within their means and, and, and are sort of fairly sensible about it. And, and we've been lucky as a result. I mean, from a, a negative financial viewpoint, we would um, we um, buy all of our yearlings for Kennet Valley on spec. And um, we would usually rely on a bit of a, um, a spring sort of wag sort of from mid-March mid perhaps to sort of the start of May, where we would sell a, sell a few remaining sort of scattered shares um, in, a, in a various social days. And, and the same, we did have a few shares available this year, and that was just impossible. That was never going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we have we've perhaps got equity in a couple of two-year-olds um, that we may not have um, had in, in previous years. But um, and, and a hot to trot, we had a few remaining sort of memberships to the to the various hot straw syndicates and um so we're probably 10 percent down on average in, on those two but i mean compared to so many people we're very lucky and um i think i think the impact perhaps might sort of sit in in the autumn when we've got to evaluate um demand for next year and i think i hope we i hope we won't be down too much um and i'm optimistic i think for a lot of people this is their um hobby um they love it and um I, I'm hoping it won't be in fact much, but we we do need to be very careful about um, estimating demand and making sure we we buy accordingly according to the demand we have. Um, so we will uh, maybe more of a pre-selling sort of um, structure for Kennet Valley in particular um, might be needed. And again, in lieu of some of the social events and going racing that you would normally have had, has the situation caused you to take any additional measures to keep your members connected to their horses and trainers through technology? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think if there's a um, a positive to take out of, I think has mm -hmm. been the the communication certainly from our trainers has 
is the level of and quality has really gone up. And I think we've, as syndicators, we've really had to lift our game as well. And I mean, technologically, we've been doing things that we probably wouldn't have dreamt about doing a year ago. Um, I speak tomorrow evening. We have a, 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 a sort of a Zoom webinar set up with um, uh, Cornelius Lysett, who's the former BBC racing correspondent, and um, Ed Walker, who's um, one of the rising stars in the training ranks, and Harry Charlton, who's assistant to his father, Roger, who's, of course, uh, leading one of the leading trainers over here. Um, so we've got those lined up, and we'll probably have about sort of 80 to 100 of our members coming in on, on a Zoom conversation. Um, where they will, of course, all be muted, but um, they're, they're pre-submitting questions, which I'll unmute them and they can ask them and those kind of things, especially for um, bearing in mind ownership, especially over here and amongst syndicates, there is a good percentage of those who are retirees who, where technology perhaps would not come as naturally as some of us. Um, so it's a pretty good effort and they've all adapted amazingly and I think really appreciated the few things that we've done so far that just to try to to get them hearing from the horse's mouth rather than hearing all of my blurbs via text and audio, et cetera. Um, it's not quite nice to hear an update from the horse's mouth itself and um, hear how how fast or, or slow their horse may be. <laughs> yeah, well, that's really fantastic um, to not only be using these technologies to keep them up to date on what's happening with their horses, but also as educational tools and perhaps things that could draw people even uh, deeper into the industry. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think that it ends up no so many um, so many possibilities. I mean, just from an industry perspective, um, I've had I've been involved in various industry things, um, from the ROA board to our racing syndicates association, um, mm -hmm. and sort of, uh, talking about a, a great British so that the the new bonus scheme coming over here. All all been doing these industry meetings over Zoom, and um, and certainly the the um, syndicates association forum we did the other day we had about 40 different syndicators come on and throw around ideas and and it was brilliant and and usually that would take place sort of as an agm um where we'd all be sort of using up probably at least half a day getting to london um and having a having a meeting and then going home whereas this was probably better and and <laughs> cheaper and more cost more time effective and and more use of them so mm -hmm. um yeah, I think there's a, there's a perhaps the racing industry, perhaps technology wouldn't be as in the forefront of some industries, but um, I think I think it certainly brought a few of us forward anyway. That's great. Just a silver lining to an unfortunate situation, like you said. On that same subject, I know that you serve on a few industry boards, like you mentioned the ROA and others. What is the current landscape like for syndicates, and how has that changed in the time you've been doing this? I think it's changed an awful lot. I've been doing it for eight years, um, which is probably minuscule compared to some. But then again, actually, you see how many new syndicates have just suddenly arisen over here in that time. I feel almost as if I might be experienced compared to some, um, yeah. which is crazy, really. But there's, um, it's come a long way. And I think there, there's quite a, um, a disparity in, um, amongst sort of the, the way our race course over here um, handle them. And some of the race courses um, have a, a better sort of um, catered for in terms of um, infrastructure to deal with numbers of people coming racing. But um, I firmly believe it's, uh, it's something that we've got to really encourage people to, um, to, to get involved with because there's so many big people have come via syndicates to get into sole ownership and, uh, and also just to spread the word. And I, I found with running syndicates, the best form of um, marketing and, and promotion is word of mouth. And um, if we can get, uh, people involved with ownership even if they haven't got the financial means to own a, a, a horse outright if they can go and get involved and take a tenth share in a horse and they've had a good time then they bring in their friends who perhaps has uh, got more financial means and they'll own their own horse outright and mm -hmm. um and in, in any case someone who has a, a tenth share um in 10 horses is, is just as just the same industry um uh, sort of impact as, as one who owns their one horse outright. So um, I really think it's something we need to promote. And I think I think perhaps certainly flat racing over here is perhaps perceived as sort of a rich man's game. And I think um, every story of uh, um, sort of the normal people um, taking part and owning a horse that can go and beat the big boys on the track is, is a really good story. And we only got to look at what's happening in Australia for that. Um, it's incredible. You look at the Melbourne Cup field, see how many are owned by these massive syndicates. Uh, that they are mm -hmm. fantastic how they're doing it, but um, I think I think there's a lot of um, I think attitudes 
changing here towards it, um, which is really good. Um, I think there's more needs to be done. We're, we're getting there, I think, and um, and uh, and I think um, all the the more good stories there are, um, the more it sort of encourages people to um, maybe um, set up syndicates or uh, or get involved with the syndicate if you're a or a race goer. From either of your of your syndicates, from Kennet Valley or from Hot to Trot, um, would you be able to name any horses for us to look forward to this season? Yeah, absolutely. We've got. I mean, for, I say on one hand, it's very frustrating given we've had no run, but I, th- I genuinely think we've got the best group of horses between the two sets we've ever had. Um, Kennet Valley, especially, has got some serious strength and depth. Um, Magical Memory is a um, dual group two winner himself. He's been off with an injury, but has come back age eight. And he's showing the same verve on the gallops. And we're really hopeful that he could be having a prep run in the first week back and, and could go and run in something like the Wokingham at, at Royal Ascot. Um, oh, with a very nice four-year-old called Sabaska, who's a, a soprano a lot, um, who's a very nice horse, who's progressive and rated 92. He, he would need to go and win on his comeback to, to Warren's place at Royal Ascot, but is capable of um, decent things in the autumn. And hopefully he can scale a ladder into, into stakes company. Um, We've also got another soprano lot, uh, very apt given that we're talking to a um, international audience where soprano is such a versatile side. Mm-hmm. We've got one called Dance Fever, who's unbeaten in three, and he's extremely exciting. He's, he's rated 91, but he's, he's capable of capable of a lot more this season, and um, we're very hopeful. Um, and hot to trot, we've got um, a very exciting filly called Curious, who won the Coral Charge on her last start, um, which is a Group Three yeah. at Sandown last season. Um, she is. Um, she could run in the Palace House um, at Newmarket uh, Guineas meeting in the first weekend back, and then um, and possibly the King's Stand at Royal Ascot. And longer term, something like the Flying Five at the Curra, which is a uh, stiff five, which suits, suits her well at Sandown, and possibly is more likely to get this off the ground. That could be her big shout. And um, I've never been involved with a. Well, I've been lucky enough to have had a second in a Group One via our Kennet Valley horse Tully a few years ago, who came second to Olympic mm-hmm. Glory in the Lockinch, but. Um, Never been lucky enough to be involved with a Group One winner, so um, that is a dream that hopefully one day will come true. But Curious, curious um, is a real uh, Curious has a live hope of, um, of of certainly being competitive in Group One company anyway. So um, it's really exciting. Yeah, well, that's great. Uh, you know that we've got racing calendars coming up again to look forward to, and hopefully uh, as soon as it's safe, the syndicate members can get back on course and, and enjoy their horses as well. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. We're all looking forward to that. I think um, I think when everything comes back, there'll be such a feeling of goodwill about it, and um, it'll be really good fun. And I suspect even the smaller meetings will be really good atmospheres. And uh, people love getting racing in the, this country, and it's it's great that uh, um, people just be longing to get back on course when it's um, when when we've got the green light. Mm, absolutely, yeah. that'll be something to look forward to. One thing with the syndicates, we'd uh, we'd we'd like to do more travelling in the future, and um, hopefully we can take ourselves we were um looking at initiative it read in the tdn this morning about um about the my runners initiative at taking a place in the everest and things like that and yeah. i think it's all in- inspirational to the likes of ourselves to um well i've been to ireland france and dubai with with syndicate runners but uh, haven't haven't as yet been to america or other places in the middle east and um or hong kong so it'd be uh, really exciting to think that we could some of our horses could go off on a few little trips at some point in the in the future we're all looking forward to traveling again even the horses sam thanks for your time and best of luck with your runners when racing gets going again 